Sophia is beginning to ask a new question, always a joyous moment, and she's beginning to ask, what time is it? And there are two ways you can always answer that question, right? You can say it's 8 p.m., but really the more important factor is it's bedtime, right? One's a number, and one is, is the end of all joy in the day, right? We, we have this one word, time, but we know how to use it in two very different ways. I could tell you 11.30 a.m., but it's far more important to know that that is lunchtime, right? And it's not just uh, times, it's also dates. We have dates, right? I could tell you that this Wednesday is January 25th, but that, you know, that's just a number. What is it? It's my birthday, right? Or I can tell you 11-11-2017. Uh, Anyone know what that is? Right? That's the first day of deer season. Right? That, that's an important date, is, isn't it? Right? It's also our harvest fest. Um, Middle of May, I can tell you May 15th, and some of you might know what May, the middle of May is. It, it, it's mat mater plant in time. All right, so we have both numbers, but we have the understanding of time as an event. Right? Are there any times, like, can you think of any, any of those in your lives? Right? What, what, calving, what, what's calving time? Exactly, right? You, the number, but you don't, it's not really, the, it doesn't matter what the number is, you know the events, you are going to be out there, you, you and the cattle, right? Yep. Any, think of any other examples of that? Yeah. Green City, they came up with the one example that is both the, the date, the, both the number and the event, the 4th of July. The 4th of July, is, it, it, it's the event, the 4th of July, that is also on the 4th of July. So. They stumped me on that one. That was impressive. But for the most part, the numbers then also have another meaning to them, right? And in English, we have one word, time, used in two, two ways. In the language of Scripture, in the New Testament in Greek, there are two words there. There's chronos, from which we get chronometer, right? Time, right? the passage of time, the way we count time, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., etc. And also the way that we count dates, right? January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th. And, and then there's kairos. There's a different sense of time. There's chronos, how we count time, and there's kairos. There are events that occur, and we know that that event, I mean, that the number is almost ancillary. It's the event that, that matters. We see this in Scripture, and it's one of those things that it's hard to like say, let's, this is where Jesus talks about time, because every time Jesus talks about time, he's using one of, one of these two words. It's hard to preach on this because it's not like Jesus preaches a, a, a parable on time. It's just baked into how he thinks. It's baked into the very language of Scripture. And, and so, for a few examples to make sure we're all on the same page on this. When Herod asks uh, the wise men what time Jesus was born, right? he's asking, what is the chronos that he was born? He wants the date so that he can know what, what point, how many, what children he should kill. Right? But when Jesus talks about the fig tree that isn't bearing fruit, he says it is the season, the time for figs. Does anyone know what the season for figs is? I don't either. But you all know like, that's the moment when figs should be ripe. Jesus asks, talks to the person who's been crippled and is laying by the pool at Siloam. He asks him, how many years? What's the time you have spent laying here? And he uses the word chronos, right? How many years have you been here? But when Jesus talks to his disciples about going in and getting something ready for the Passover, he says, my time has come. Kairos, it's time for the event. It's time for Passover. In the same way that when it's time for Thanksgiving, it's time... What does it mean when a woman says it is time? If she's pregnant, you know exactly what that means, right? It's the kairos. It's the time. The, it's, it's the moment that has, a, has arrived, right? So the Bible has this particular way of thinking about time that both understands that it's linear, one, two, three, four, five, six, but there are also moments. The kairos, the moment matters. And there are, there are moments that repeat themselves. Passover is every year. And, and there are moments... That, that we are headed towards that we haven't arrived at yet. 
Right? When you read the book of Revelation, it talks about the time when, when the New Jerusalem will come down and, and the, there will be the river of life with the trees, for the, with the leaves, for the healing of the nations. And that time is coming when God's will is going to be done on earth it is, as it is in heaven. And you know the time, the word there? It's not chronos because it doesn't tell us how, many, how, how far out we are from it. It's talking about kairos. There is a moment coming. There is a time we're headed towards where God's will is going to be done. Thanks be to God. The Bible has this sense of time having a purpose. We are going somewhere. We're heading towards a moment. And every day we live between now and that moment that Revelation describes has purpose because it's getting us closer to that moment. Time is not just a set of minutes to survive, but it has directionality, it has purpose, and it's taking us somewhere. Understanding this shapes how we receive this gift of time. The idea that everyone is given 24 hours, you're right. Everyone is given 24 hours in the day. But that's not really what, that's chronos, right? That's how we count time. That's not what really matters about time. What matters about time is how much of that chronos do we redeem and fill with, with the kairos, the moments that matter. Susan Guthrie writes about this, and she writes that uh, we are not as Christians trying to learn to walk in two worlds at the same time. We're not trying to walk in two worlds at the same time. Instead, what we're trying to do is we're trying to walk in two times in the same world. We're trying to walk in two times in the same world. And that gets at something true. Everyone is caught up in Kronos. Everyone is captured by, by the hours past, day by day by day. But not everyone names the moments. Not everyone has, is, has, takes time and redeems it and uses it for the community in context with the, for the good of each other. Everyone has a 6.30 p.m. Not everyone has a, a dinner with community. Right? That's the difference there. We are called to live in the same world but see both and experience both understandings of time, two ways of time. I think that that is what we're called to do here. Right? Everyone here gets a Friday night, but does everyone here go and indulge in that wonderful Friday night of Milan football? Right? That's the difference. Who cares if it's 7.30? It's time for football. Right? That, that's the difference there. It's not that it's 11 a.m. on a Sunday. That's great. It is time for worship. Right? That takes 11 a.m. And 11 a.m. on Sunday is not just a random number. It is a time when I gather with you around this table, and it is good. Right? It is taking a, a mere number and redeeming it because we are gathered as we are meant to be gathered in the name of God at this moment. Right? Now, it's not always easy to keep track of moments. When you walk onto the floor of a plant, whether it's PSF or, or ConAgra or Old ConAgra or whatever, I, there are certain jobs that strip us of, of, of the, it, it's, it's just like, it's just minute after minute, right? How, how many pigs can we cut up? How many chickens? I mean, there are certain jobs that are just minutes, right? There are certain jobs that you never, when you get into, you can't lose track of the moment, right? There are certain jobs, if you are a nurse or a cop or a teacher, can you ever lose track of when it's the new moon? Right? You know, don't you? Some of you are giggling because you know. And those of you who haven't been involved in those trades, you don't know. But they know that's the moment. It's the full moon. <laughs> Duck and cover. Here it comes. <laughs> now, what does it look like to practice not just going through chronos, not just counting off the minutes, not just going through the drudgery of hour after hour because it can become that, but to practice naming moments, redeeming them, using them as the gift that they are. Some of them are easy because uh, when someone says we're going to baptize a child in the family, everyone shows up. Have a wedding, a funeral, when you say goodbye to someone dearly loved, a graduation. There are these kairos, there are these moments that we mark, and that's not hard. The one-off things that don't happen often, that's not the challenge. The challenge is to take the, the repeating time, the sense of seasons and weeks, and fill those with moments. 
Right? The, the way that the seasons, we have our, the church year, we, we go from Advent when we are waiting, to Christmas when we are celebrating the birth of a child, to Lent when we take this moment to really focus on uh, how we fall short, and Easter to pr look at the promise of forgiveness and, and joy. Right? We have the church year moves us through these moments. Right? But even that is a little bit abstract. I think that when it comes to redeeming time, the challenge is to look at our weeks. Like, how does the week unfold? Is your week full of chronos, it's just hour after hour, or do you have moments? Right? Thursdays at about 6.30, 6.35 a.m., depending how late I stayed up, I get up and I go down and I have coffee down at the gas station. And, and then Thursday afternoon at, at 2 p.m., Thursday at 2, I go over to Green City and I have coffee again, coffee and cards. Those are two moments that I look forward to all week. Right? My, my week drives towards that coffee on Thursday. It's a well-caffeinated day, and I love it. Right? Friday nights with family, um, Sunday mornings of worship. Right? What are the moments in your week? That, what are the things that sort of make sense of your week? And because I want us to, this to be practical, I have for you a sheet with all of the days of the week laid out here. And I want you to take a, a few moments, and uh, I would like you to write down, like, take a, write down what are the moments that delineate your week. Don't, I don't want any time, don't put down any numbers. I, I, I don't, if, I don't, I'm not worried about whether you pray at 9 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. But for me, I would put prayer at the top of Monday through Friday, because Saturday is kind of odd, and Sunday I'm getting ready to come here. I don't actually get up and pray in the morning on Sunday, because I don't, and maybe I shouldn't confess that. The point being, Monday or Monday through Friday, at some point before nine, I sit down and I pray and I write and I read. And that is a moment that makes my day start well. And if I don't start that day with that moment, that day, frankly, bleh. Right? What are the moments that make sense of your week? Let's take a, a minute or two and start filling that out. Any questions? Does it make okay. So as you look at the sheet, you can continue to fill this out later. Do you feel good about it? Does it look like, do you have moments that you're happy with? You, you look forward to your week and you say, you know, I get to, I get to do this and this and this week, this week and it is a good week. And it's or is there just a bit too much chronos, just a bit too much time that's just time? And you look at it and you think, you know what, I got nothing going this week. Right? The good news is that Kronos and Kairos, you get both. You just got to name the one. You got to create it. You got to see it, right? When I showed up here, there was no such thing as coffee and cards over at Green City. We sat down, we talked, and we said we need to do something to gather. And now it has become something we've been doing for two or three years. And it's fabulous. Right? It's great. It's wonderful. It is something that we created. We took this chunk of time. When I got here seven years ago, Thursdays at 2 were just Thursdays at 2. Now it is coffee time with friends. Right? You, Kronos can become Kairos. You just got to name it, look around and share it with someone. Or just I mean, when I pray in the morning, I pray by myself. But that I took that time and I said, first thing after I work out, that is God's time. And it is good time. But it is good time because I took the time to name it as such. Right? If you look at your week and there's just a bit too much chronos, that's not, the, that's not a problem. That's an opportunity. That's an opportunity to take time and to fill it as God wants it to be filled, to fill it with purpose and fill it with community and fill it with time as it is meant to be used. Right? There are people sitting here, sitting around you, who will help you create moments and moments together, life redeemed, time redeemed. And I want to end by thanking you for making this time what it is. Right? This is not 11 a.m. on Sunday. This is worship. This time matters, this time is good, and it is not good because it's 11, it's time because we have agreed this is God's time. Thank you. Amen.